Good morning, everybody. Hello, how are you doing today? I'm fine. <laughs> My dear friends and members of the UKIP, it is very good to see you all again. It's always a pleasure to have a chance to visit your annual party congress. You are inspirational people. You and your enthusiasm gives me courage to continue the work my party and I have been doing in Finland. I cherish our cooperation, our fruitful mutual work for the good cause. Dear friends, last year we met in Birmingham. A lot has happened in the world during the last 12 months. But it also seems some things doesn't change, do they? Has European Union become more democratic? No. More desirable? No. Or closer to the citizens? Absolutely not. No, it hasn't. It is probably doing worse than ever before. After all the mistakes the Euro bigwigs have made, they haven't learned a thing. What a shameful. As you know, Finland is one of the Nordic countries. We have a Scandinavian term for this group of five countries, Norden, Norden. We often talk about Nordic cooperation. Children and school learn quite early that the Nordic countries are our clo closest allies and friends in the world. Our societies are very similar with each other. But did you know that Finland is the only Nordic country that has adopted the Euro? Poor us. <laughs> Denmark and Sweden are members of the European Union, but they have decided to keep out from the Eurozone. They have kept their own grounds. Norway and Iceland are not even in the European Union. They see no reason why they should join. In Finland, we are often told that our country could not survive outside the Eurozone. We are told that there is no other plausible choice for us. If we left the Eurozone, we, would be, we will be hit by the terrible recession interest rates would skyrocket, and the locusts would eat all our food. <laughs> and that is just the start. <laughs> Criticizing the euro, not to mention the whole European Union, is the same as refusing every form of international cooperation. I am sure you have noticed the same thing here in Britain. If you try to defend your national sovereignty, of your own country, you are seeing as a grumpy old sod, village idiot who doesn't understand the life in 21st century global world. You criticize the Euro, European Union, and you are immediately will hear some silly remarks of a moat and a drawbridge. But at the Nordic countries outside European Union and Eurozone, Norway, Iceland, Sweden, Denmark are there in dire straits. Are there poor Panama states full of xenophobic lunatics? Definitely not. Are there economy in crisis? Iceland used to be, but they are now on a steady growth, the better path in front of them. And life will prevail again. They are all in completely different situation compared to Euro countries in the southern Europe. Our Nordic neighbors want to take care of their own economy. And you know what? I don't blame them. You have only to take a short look what the people like Barroso, Van Rompuy or Olli Rehn have done and you understand. Look at these people. Good gracious old Maoist, 
Belgian poet, and they should be allowed to take care of our economical matters. That's Barney. It's like hiring Ronnie Biggs with his friends to drive a security van for the Bank of England. <laughs> Dear friends, skepticism and criticism towards European Union is increasing throughout the continent. Unfortunately, those une unelected pilots in Brussels cannot see or admit it, but luckily that doesn't affect the truth. My dear friends, let me take you to Greece. When you visit Athens, you can see two kinds of ruins, ancient and modern. You can see the ruins of the Pantheon Temple and the Dionysus Theatre amongst many, many other old places. And then you can see modern ruins, the ruins of a success story called Euro. When standing on the streets of Athens, you can see the ruins of common European monetary policy. Go to the Athens, look around and see what kind of desert people have been led. Cars are burning, flags are burning, the police is using tear gas, and unemployed, disillusioned people who see no future in their own country. That's a tragedy of Greek type. On the other side of Europe, citizens swallow expenditure cuts one after another, bailout after bailout. We are paying, we all are paying for this. So, in order that big European banks and investors would not have to face losses when the risks become real. Hope and glory are long gone, which is not a surprise. The modern European Union, among many other mistakes, deliberately forgot many of those European principles on which our continent has relied for centuries, for example, like democracy. I think a real disgrace in EU-style democracy were the referenda about the new EU constitution. I'm su sure that you all remember it. France said no, Holland said no to the constitution 2005. Irish were voted two times. And after that, Big weeks in Brussels dropped a couple of symbolic lines and edited some choices of words. And after these cosmetic changes, suddenly the paper was not regarded as a constitution anymore. The European Union has imitated René Magritte, a French painter. Magritte has a painting of a pipe underneath there is a text. Ceci n'est pas une pipe. This is not a pipe. <laughs> it's the same manner that the European Union wrote a constitution and then said, no, this is not a constitution. If the European Union was an enterprise, its leaders would have been sacked ages ago. But as it is not even an ordinary institution, its leaders are praised and rewarded for their work. That's outrageous. Dear friends, the current European Union is heading full speed towards one big federal state in which the member countries need to say goodbye to their sovereignty. We have every reason to be worried, but do you know what? We can be worried, but we are not beaten. We are threatened, but not defeated. We are surrounded, but not surrendered. That's the way to go. The fat cats in Brussels do not understand what is best for Europe. 
the only thing what is best for them and their de technocratic friends, but citizens in European countries are waking up. And that is where our hope lies. The European parliamentary election will take place next spring. That means we have a grand and vital job in front of us. We must offer the people a plausible and attractive choice. And then we have to encourage people to vote. Sympathy is not enough. Vote is needed. The direction of the European Union can change in one night if Eurosceptic parties gain support all around Europe. That is one of the most important reasons for the cooperation between parties like the UKIP and the Finns party. Together we are stronger. Together we have more credibility. Together we shall succeed. Dear friends, I wish you all the best. Keep up the good work. And finally, and finally, one sensible piece of advice from the depths of Eurozone. Keep the pound! <laughs>